to ask you a question. Would you ever want to learn guitar by playing air guitar? And probably your answer is going to be, well, well uh, no, of course not. You wouldn't play a guitar, actually learn to play a guitar by just playing air guitar. I mean, that may make you feel good. It's lots of fun, but you, that's not how you actually learn to play the guitar. Learning to play the guitar involves some practice and repetition and you really got to work at it sometimes and then you get to get out in front of people and that's when you get to strut your stuff and it feels kind of really good and even just playing by yourself after you've really got it down it feels terrific well actually learning in math and science is quite a bit like that the way we are often teaching in math and science nowadays is it's kind of a little bit of playing air guitar we put so much emphasis on making STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, really fun and that we forget that it, there's also some really a little bit of work that goes into learning these kinds of materials. We, we would never even dream of teaching someone to play the guitar without actually asking them to memorize some chords. We'd never teach uh, learning uh, how to speak a foreign language without learning and memorizing some of the words. But in math and science, we say, oh, no, no, you can look it up. You don't need to memorize anything. But yet, research on expertise, particular in particular areas like chunking, neural chunking, uh, show that if you really want to learn something well, you often have to get the key components memorized. So unfortunately, in, well, in centuries gone by, we used to think memory is the only aspect of learning. And so students were told to memorize and that was how they learned. And people began to understand, wait a minute, memory is not the only aspect of learning. And so we went to understanding and comprehension as being the most important part of learning. And we threw out the idea of memorization because we said, oh, it's really bad, you can look it up. So I think one of the most important things we could do to help students to feel more comfortable and to excel in math and science is to bring back a little bit of memorization. Get rid of those sheets where we, we students could bring in a sheet of all their equations and so forth. Now, it, it, it's time to bring a little bit of memory back because that will help the students to feel more comfortable and confident with the material. So I think if that's one thing that I could encourage it nowadays, it's to, to get away from this trend, which is completely antithetical to what we know from neuroscience about how we learn effectively, and bring in some memory back into what you're doing and what you're teaching. The story itself is often a part of who we are, how we learn effectively. And that is why I, I often open my talks with this idea of, well, it's, a, it's sort of a joke, but it's also a, a very I think worthwhile story for people, and that is the story of this, this fellow I knew who was an extraordinary mimic. And he was, he was just amazing. He could mimic almost anybody. And so he was just a thin little guy with a wispy little voice, and what he used to like to do was he liked to uh, mimic the station manager, because this was when I was working down in Antarctica. So what Neil used to like to do is he'd pick up the phone and he'd say, Hello, this is Art Brown speaking in a perfect imitation of Art Brown's voice. And one day, picked up the phone, and it was, uh, it was Art Brown. And he, says, he says, hello, this is Art Brown speaking. And of course, Art is not too happy to be finding himself there. So Art says, who the heck is this? Or words to that effect. And Neil says, why Art? This is you. I'm so glad you've finally gotten in touch with yourself. And so the, 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 the thing is, that idea of getting in touch with yourself, people suddenly think, oh, well, yes, that was, he was saying get in touch with yourself. 
and I can get in touch with myself. And what is one of the most important ways you can get in touch with yourself? And that is through learning. That's how your brain changes. That is the key behind everything we are as human beings. And I think that little story that sort of obliquely heads into to getting in touch with yourself and one of the most important aspects you have as a human being, and that's your ability to learn, that, that suddenly makes people appreciate what we do as teachers and what we are as learners and how important it is in, in everyday life. So I think it's through story as well as through metaphor and analogy that, that we can truly begin to appreciate the, the all-encompassing beauty that our brains are, are setting forth for us in our lives. For myself, I find that the teaching that makes the most impact on people is when, when the mirror is held up to the audience so that they suddenly see, see themselves more clearly. And it's not a reflection of what you know, it's a reflection of, that enhances what they know. And it, that, that is when people are, you make the biggest impact as a teacher, uh, as a speaker, as in any kind of outreach that you're trying to do to make a difference in people's lives.